there's only so much more of us I can take when people are saying, I'm a murderer and I killed this woman. Right. That, that's not helping me. Yeah, so I'm not a I need to... I'm not, I'm not a murderer. Oh. I'm not a murderer. Absolutely. Um, yes. Right. So, and we're still in the process with everything. Um, obviously, we'd like to conduct secondary interviews um, with everyone um, since we've kind of had some time. Um, for a few days now, so yes, we would like to do secondary interviews with any with everyone. And they want to do that how? Um, so it's really up to you. Obviously, we we can travel. Um, who's the person that Who's the person that conducts the interview? I do. And you want to do that? Well, how do you best do that? Face to face, or you can do it by Zoom, or what do you want to do? Um, I would prefer face to face, um, but if it's easier for you, then. You know, we can do it over the phone, but yeah, I, I would prefer face yeah, I would to probably face. do it, you know, by Zoom or by phone, because we're here with our six kids. Yeah. And so leaving, the, 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 you know, I left to come and shoot the movie, and that was the time that we made arrangements for that time to be allocated that way, but now it's all... It's a different, obviously, it's a different ballgame. Yeah, now, and so. I don't really want to do anything over Zoom because it's not secured. <sighs> right. Um, so I don't want, you know, someone on Zoom oh, to... Hold on one second. Okay. I'm just going to get my watch in the directions. So point nine miles, you're going to make a right at 7A. Um, uh, anyway, I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, yeah, no, I would just prefer not to do anything over Zoom because you never know who can hack into Zoom at any yes, point. Yes, okay. So you want to do it as a regular phone call? Yeah, we can do, like I said, we can do phone call or in person. Yeah, or in person for me to come there would be difficult. I'm, I'm just saying what's best is a phone is an option. Let's do it over the phone would be better for me, actually. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Um, we can definitely do that. I need some time to interview these girls first. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't really have a ton of questions for you right now um right, no, I I, listen i'm somebody who i don't expect your department to go on tv and say we're going to exonerate alec baldwin right but everywhere you go people are like you, 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 oh, yeah, yeah, you, make you should have checked the gun you should have checked it on i'm like well no actually that's not how my business works they have a person there who they are the person that checks the gun. That's what, that's what they're paid to do yeah and, and when you. hannah apparently is in the press with her lawyer saying I have no idea where these live rounds came from. I'm going to go, oh, really? Yeah, and we you actually have no idea? had no idea that she was going to do that. Right. I have no idea, she said, where the rounds came from. And I was asking them for more safety training. That's a lie. That's a lie. I talked to the producers. That's a lie. She, she wasn't sitting there going, oh, please, I need more safety training. Mm -hmm. She walked around and said, my father was a legendary armorer. My father's this famous armor and, and, and I'm so proud of him and I'm so happy to be in the family business. She didn't, she didn't, hold up one second please. I'm trying to get my way. Uh, one mile, you're going to make a left on 313 West. Uh, anyway, I don't want to fuck Kate to death with this now. I'm not saying she was cocky when she walked around. She certainly wasn't asking. She certainly wasn't wide-eyed and asking people for, oh, like, when's my next safety meeting? On the contrary. She, she, she wanted you to know she had everything under control and she was her father's daughter. Okay. There was no, there was no alarms being rung about safety and this and that. This guy, by the way, who you read about in the paper, and I know that you dismiss most of what you read in the paper, but that guy who said, "I'm an armor, I'm an armorer," and they approached me about the job and I turned it down. He was in the LA Times because it was an accident waiting to happen. The producer told me they called him, left a voicemail message for him, and he never returned their phone call. So yeah, the idea that there was some exchange with them—that's a lie. And the reason he wasn't hired was because his package was too expensive. But let me tell you something that I, I'm desperate for you to tell your bosses there. And that is, every movie seeks to save money. Steven Spielberg seeks to save money. 
Tom Cruise seeks to save money. The idea that we did things on a budget and sought to save money, that puts us in league with every other movie being made today in the world. We did not have some unusual cost-cutting procedure, not at all. We had a budget that was of its size. Everybody knew what they were doing. They knew what we, how much you could spend in each department. They negotiate with people. But the idea that we cut corners to save money, that's a lie. That's okay. a lie. Each one of these people, remember, it's urgent that you tell Mendoza and those people there that each one of these people was approved by their union. SAG for the actors, DGA for Halls, IOTSI for Gutierrez. Not one of them came to us and said, well, we have a red flag on them. Nobody. Every single one of them was approved by their union to show up and go to work. Okay? Okay. All right, let me know when you want to talk because I'm desperate to, to do this the next round because, I mean, there's only so much more of this I can take. Or people are saying, I'm a murderer and I killed this woman. Right. That, that's not helping me. Yeah, so I'm not a, I need I'm to, not, I'm not a murderer. And you know most I mean? of our, you know, and, you know, the majority of our questions are coming down to Hannah and Sarah and David. So that's why, you know, I haven't really reached out to you because there's not, there's not a whole lot that I would say, you know, that is a gray area that I have with you. No, I'm saying that I, I don't have. That's why I don't have any questions. Oh, no, you, 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 listen, you, you obviously you have a job to do. I, I have faith in you guys. You have, a, you have a system you have to go by. You have to leave the net as wide as open. The other thing is she says to the, to the press, her lawyer said, she locked the guns away. She locked the guns away. They neglected to say she left the ammo out. Sarah Zachary told me that. Right. They left the ammo on the cart during lunch. And I believe that's in mine, or I mean, at least like in my interviews, that's being said, I'm trying to keep, you know, I, I try to release the minimal amount in order to get what I need. Um, so of course not every single detail is going to be released because the media is being hounds and, um, you know, the less that I can give to get my job done, the happier I'm with. Um, but um, I will tell you that at some point, uh, obviously, you know that we sent the firearm um, to the FBI crime lab for testing and ballistics. And then they're either going to do DNA and fingerprints or both. Um, obviously, we know who handled the gun. Um, that's not it's not a. Uh, a question at whose hands were on that gun and probably more than just, you know, the, the three, four of you that handled it. Obviously, um, directors handled it. There was a lot of people handling these weapons on set. Um, well, mostly the, the three ones in, in the chain of title, I would say, are Hannah to Halls to me. Right. And, well, and I believe Sarah but, but pulled I think, them in. I think, I mean, again, I don't mean to tell you your business, but an important question for Halls is, why did you take the gun off the cart and hand it to Alec when that's when when Alec's testimony is that ninety nine percent of the time Hannah would present him with the gun? He may hand you the gun when they're done. Hannah would hand me the gun, and when after we were done with the scene, whether there was shooting involved or not, I have been trained as an actor to hand the gun off to the prop master or armor. That's a new phrase for me. I haven't heard that phrase in a while. The prop master or the first AD. That's what I was trained to do. The minute they say cut, you hand off the gun. Okay. You, 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 you are expected as the actor to hand the gun to one of those two people the moment they say cut. Right. Now, very often, as I said to you, Hannah would be further away from the set because of the sight lines with the camera. She would hand me the gun, She would, she, and sometimes she'd say, this gun is, this gun is hot. It's a round, and then we're going to shoot in this take. And I would always keep the gun pointed down. You know, we all knew what we were doing. And then when, the gun, then, then when the scene was over, even if we didn't shoot, I'd hand Halls the gun because Hannah was a little bit further away. Why did Halls take the gun off the cart and hand me the gun? Why, in that instance? Why? And he must have a reason why. Why? Did you see him take it off the cart? I'm told the other women told me he took it off the cart. I think, I think he said he took it off the cart. Okay. And I think he testified that he took it off the cart, but all I know is, it is that... It's very rare that Halls hands me the gun on the set, and this time he did. He handed me the gun. Okay. He said, we have a cold gun on set, and handed me the gun. I thought to myself, oh, okay. He said, I thought, is he in that much of a hurry? Or did Hannah pass him off the gun because the set was crowded? Sometimes people will behave a certain way because the set is crowded. It's a cramped space. There's wires, cables, boxes, generators, cameras. 
you know, the camera, the camera has primacy and the crew has primacy. So everybody moves around them. So sometimes Hannah might hand Paul's the gun because she can't fit into the room. There's no room. And then we were in that church, which I don't think the church was that crap. But I'm just curious to ask Paul, someone who asked Paul, why did you pass the gun on to Alec? Why not have it this time? Why? That's yeah. rare. Was, That's very rare. Was Hannah ever inside that church after lunch? I don't recall that. I don't recall. I don't think so. I, 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 don't, I don't recall. Okay. I don't recall. I don't recall seeing Hannah. Uh, I just recall me sitting there thinking about what I had to do. Hold on one second. I'm going to see what I'm going. Uh, you're going to make a left on a uh, lace front in one eighth of the last. You know, I'm with my wife and we're driving around with our kid against the fresh air. But I just think that's an important question for you, Mendoza, your whole outfit there, which is why did you hand him the gun this time? Why? When Alec will testify that 99% of the time Hannah presented him with the gun. Okay. You may relieve him of the gun, but why did you hand him the gun at that time? Okay. And the other question, of course, for Hannah is, did you leave the ammunition on the cart unattended during lunch? Right. And that, I mean, we've already, you know, kind of gone yeah. over that with her and everything and Sarah. Um, I will let you know that at some point we are going to have to get um, DNA and fingerprints from everyone that was involved at that time. Right. Because we have to, so. To eliminate the people that are, you know. Well, it's not even to eliminate the people, it's to more confirm, you know, and of course, like by statements, we know that that was the gun that was used, but we have to have lab results saying like, yes. Oh, no, I was. understand. When I say eliminate, I mean, then you sit there and go, well, we know those are Alex prints. We know those are Hannah. So that way, if you find a fifth unknown set of prints, that becomes a, you know, a question. Right. But as I said to you before, I mean, I, and again... I've heard, if there's one thing I found distressing, is the conflict between, did she take the guns and go shooting with her friends or not? Yeah. Some people say yes, some people say no. And she has said no, and I'm like, well, you know, I'm just, I'm just very concerned about that, because that, that might be, in, in order for her to be to be merely negligent, that might have been the opportunity for her to accidentally commingle the live rounds with the prop rounds. Yeah. I, I don't know, I don't know. Anyway, right. uh, when, you want, when you want to instruct me as to how to provide you with the DNA and the uh, uh, fingerprints, where I would go to do that in, in my area, tell me, and I'll go do whatever you want me to do. I'm, I'm going to be in New York uh, probably at the end of next week, okay? At the end of next week? Okay, let me see if I can reach out to, do you know what well, you're... I'm in Vermont now, so if you want me to find a place here, is there a state police office here I can go to? We're in Vermont indefinitely. I'm thinking we might go back next Friday. We don't know. We really don't know because the press has really been very unpleasant, very unpleasant here. Oh. Chasing my wife and I around in a car, uh, you know, really aggressive, causing, uh, they're, they're behind us now, you know, and, uh, and uh, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're so aggressive, they're going to cause a car accident. It's horrible. It's horrible. I mean, I'm, not, I'm not Princess Diana, but it's just smack of that in terms of these never let up. Yeah, they haven't let up here either. We still have rows and rows of crews outside. So, right. um, but yeah, let me try to just facilitate and see. I can tell you right now if you want to write this down. I'm in Manchester, Vermont, in Lower Vermont, in Southern Vermont. I'm in Manchester. Okay. And uh, hold on, we're back. We're in Manchester, Vermont, and uh, uh, the and the. Um, uh, we're in Manchester, Vermont, and we're going to be here indefinitely. If there's something you want me to do DNA-wise or fingerprint-wise, let me know, okay? Okay, so let me just see if we can facilitate doing that out of state and then um, and having them just send it to us, or it might be, you tell me. You or tell we me. might be okay. able to go out there. Okay, but you tell me. And you tell me when you want to do the next round of questions, okay? Okay, sounds great. All right, thank you, ma'am. I'll talk to you later. Thank Bye. you. Um, calling you because I thought, and again... I, I'm working very hard to get this right in terms of I know what you can say and what you can't say, but what I'm wondering is is when they claim that they think this is sabotage and somebody else put the bullet either in the box of bullets or in the gun, I haven't really looked at it that carefully. Is that something you guys are leaving open as a possibility? Uh, we're leaving it really, I mean, everything open as a possibility, yeah. but... Um, you know, I think we have only gotten an interview with one cameraman at this point. Um, so we're trying to set up additional interviews with these other guys that had walked off. Um, but, I mean, 
I don't, I would say that statement's a little bit out of left field. But it's her lawyer saying that on her behalf. Right. I find that wild to me. I can't even believe that. Well, I mean, everybody's got a point somewhere other than their client. That's, you know, that's a lawyer's job. Right. So it's, it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's their job to protect their client. Right. Um, but, yeah, as far as, as the sabotage, I mean, I know you had stated that you couldn't see the camera crew planting live ammunition. That, that, that I thought, well, that anybody would do that to address their grievances about the show. You know, but um, the uh, I really don't know. All, all, all I know is is that, and again, I'm not asking you to repeat to me what Hannah said in her one and only interview. I know you mentioned she only sat down with you the night she won't come back and do it again. Correct. Well, that's dependent on her lawyers. So, um, it's still up in the air at this point. However. The statement that she's provided to me and the statement that her lawyers have put out to the media are different. Yeah, they're cons- Yeah, but I'm just saying that for us, everybody on our end, I mean, everybody in the crew, <clears throat> everybody, it's was a real obsession or an obsession to find out what happened here. They're all saying to themselves, she loaded the gun. That's that's her job. Uh, 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 Halls does not load the gun. He does not. Right. But, I mean, you know, he did claim that he is supposed to check them or did check it or didn't check it to the ability that he should be. And, you know, he handed you that weapon. But no, no, I'm, I'm separating the two. I'm saying she loaded the gun. And he's the last line of defense. He doesn't check the gun. Now, here's an, here's an inconsistency in what Hall said that I find funny. He said, when I checked the gun, I saw, and I can't speak to this, he saw whatever it is he thought in the gun. Two rounds, three rounds, he thought he saw. But then he announced cold gun on the set. Those two things conflict. So they don't ever use that term for dummies, right? No, cold, cold gun is an empty gun. Okay. Old gun is an empty, or he's inspected them if they're dummies with no charges. They're just cosmetic. Again, so you can see into the cylinder, you can see there's some material there, and they've got no charges to them whatsoever. That that, that could be termed old gun, which would have been a whim, which would have forced him to have examined every bullet that was in there that it had no charge. You know, it, had, it had the hole punched into the. You've seen the rounds that have the hole drilled into the casing. Yes. And that's a, that's a dummy round. There's nothing. They put the beads in. You can rattle them. But you. But if he says cold gun, uh, 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 it's one or the other. It's cosmetic rounds with no charge or usually nothing. Nothing. Okay. But, um, but what he's saying, the minute you say cold gun on set, you're telling everybody in that room there's nothing to worry about. Which is why, in my mind, she stood right in front of me while we composed that shot. She believed it was a cold gun. There was nothing threatening her. There was no, there was no potential for anything to go, let alone a live round. Right. Well, I mean, it's not, and of course, she's not in any of the handling process. Right. Um, and when Hannah says, or her lawyer says, maybe somebody sabotaged them, I'm like, well, you put the rounds in the gun. No one else loads the gun. No one. No one. Not, 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 not uh, um, to my knowledge, Sarah Zachary or the other girl. I mean, I was told that for me, she loaded the gun every time. That Hannah did. Hannah is the one that loads the gun every time. Okay. So. And anyway. it never went back to, you know, after lunch, it never went back to Hannah. I don't know who took the gun from me after lunch. Probably Hannah. You know, meaning 
were rehearsing, uh, um, I probably gave Hannah the gun after lunch because there was no need for vacate the sets. You know, you 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 uh, uh, Halls is the one that strips me of the gun when they say cut if the set is crowded. You know, if the camera moves on a track from one side of the room to the other, if there's anything that forces us to uh, limit the number of people on the in the space itself, reflections. But he's the one. I mean, Dave is the one that handed you the gun after lunch. Yes, yes, he's the one who said "cold gun on set" and handed me the gun. And then the gun stayed on you the entire time. The gun was in my holster the entire time. Then I began the process with. Alina of composing that shot. She'd say, raise the gun up, a little lower, a little lower, okay, right there to the right. She's telling me what to do. Yeah. For her purpose. And that, but that's what I'm saying, like, there was no time in between when Dave handed you that gun to... No. When no, it went off. Never. That it went back. I, would, I, would, I wouldn't hand the gun. I never in my life would hand the gun to someone other than had our holes. Okay. My training is that when the moment they say cut, on a rehearsal, you can say cut on a rehearsal. They'll say the phrase cut on rehearsal. So everybody's quiet and everyone's focused. Everyone's doing their jobs while we rehearse. And then say cut on rehearsal means we're stopping to rehearse. And then I only give the gun to one of the people only, not to anybody else. Nobody. Okay. So from the time that Halls handed me the gun to the time the gun was taken away when the incident happened, I on the entire time. Okay. Do you remember um, who dressed you with your belt? Like the gun or the holster? Uh, usually it's all three of the prop women. Um, uh, like Hannah would get down and she would tie the sheath around my thigh. We would put the, then she would have, have some hand her the knife. You know, like with the, what's the girls, the other girl's name, Nicole? Yeah. So Nicole would maybe hand her the knife. Um, they put the, 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 Sarah and Nicole would help me put the uh, holster on. And Hannah would tie that down because it had to be tied down a certain way to draw the holster. The holster was not the holster I wanted. And we had some issue. I mean, nothing unpleasant, but I was very disappointed that they didn't fit that holster the way I wanted it to, so that that gun, for the very purposes of these shots, insert shots of the gun being drawn quickly. You don't want to look like you're fumbling. Mm -hmm. I want the holster rigged a certain way. It was not cut or manufactured that way. So we had to tie it in place. If we didn't tie it in place, it would start to kind of loop around, and my body would kind of manipulate it. It would start to go under my armpits. Okay. And that... But I needed the gun to come all the way around the holster part, all the way around to my, um, this is a crime presentation. Uh, 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 you know, my sternum area. So as close, close as we could get, like right, like right below my pectoral muscle, there would be the gun for me to draw it quickly. And we had to tie that down to accommodate that. Do you remember if they told you, what, when you guys were rehearsing, did they tell you the sequence that, like, how you were, or what was to be expected when you were going to um, shoot the gun? Because it's my understanding you were gonna, you're about to get, like, in a gunfight, pretty much. With the, girls, the two guys in front of me, uh, uh, Ackles was in front of me, camera right to my left, when we rehearsed. <laughs> and those two guys have a gun on me, and I look like I'm slumped in a chair, like I might be dying in a pew where I was seated when the event happened. And in the scene, they would, of course, have all those, because you, you cut to them for their angle, you cut to me for my angle. And in my angle, they wouldn't be there. They would all be camera left. They'd be gone. I would just be pretending I could there, and I would pull. And he said, you're going to slowly pull this gun out, and the minute you hear some gun fighting outside, they're going to be distracted. You finish pulling your gun, shoot. Well, you shoot one of them. Okay. This where my stunt double dives out the window. He jumps out the window. Uh, all this and all this Western stunt craziness. And the so I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. So the sequence of you is to pull it out and and shoot, pretty much. The sequence was to pull it out and shoot, 
but in, for the, but but no one made any mention, and normally they do, that in this angle we were rehearsing when the gun went off, that there would be any shooting in that angle. They, I don't recall them saying that. They almost always tell you, I always say, will we fire the gun in this shot? That's a critical difference. You know, that's, they'll, they'll tell you that. So they'll, they'll tell the crew that so nobody's surprised. Sometimes you'll draw the gun out for an angle and, and they're, they're, they're photographed that, and you don't fire the gun. And I don't recall whether they said we would or wouldn't be firing the gun. And so when, I, when he said cold gun on set and I pulled that gun out, and she was guiding me where to aim the gun. Then I said, do you want me to lower the gun low enough for you to see the cocking of the gun? She said, yes. I said, can we get that in this angle? She said, yes. And as I had the gun in my hand, and she'd been directing me where to point the gun, I pulled the hammer back. And as I said to you before, I never cock a gun, an empty gun, and fire because it can do damage to the pen. You're always told, don't damage uh, 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 a production gun. This is somebody's property. You you squeeze the trigger maybe with the with the uh, um, the hammer in your thumb and guide it back slowly. You never fire. You never pull the trigger on an empty gun. Never, and I never have. So then you took the took the gun and I cock it back. I've told you this before. I cock it back and I said, "Can you see that?" She said, "Yes." And I don't want to go all the way back and cock it. I just pulled it three quarters of the way. I said, can you see that? That's okay. She said, yes. Then I let go of the hammer. And that's when the gun went off. Okay. I mean, she was, I mean, I, I mean in a way, what sickens me the most, is she was guiding me through the very motions that wound up costing her her life. Mm-hmm. But they never tell you guys to keep your finger off the trigger. Well, you know, I never have my finger on the trigger. Never, 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 never. I never cock the gun. And I never, uh, uh, I never, uh, I never cock the gun all the way and pull the trigger to advance the hammer because I was told that could, you know, it's, a, it's a subtle process, but I was always told years ago that could damage the gun. Right, so, but your finger was in the, um, on the trigger during your rehearsal. It, it, it may have been to show her the shot, because in the shot it would be. The idea of carrying a gun and having your finger off the trigger, I don't know what they call that loop that goes around, that metal loop that goes around the trigger, Mm -hmm. but whatever that is, to take your finger out off the trigger and guide it outside for safety purposes, you would normally do that, I would normally do unless the shot was a shot to see my finger off the trigger and to see me cock the gun. And this Just one was terror. with it on the trigger. My finger was on the trigger, but I didn't pull the trigger. I pulled the hammer back. Yeah, but that's, partially. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a normal function of your hand when you're pulling something back that your finger is typically going to follow that motion since your index finger and your thumb kind of work in conjecture with each other. But I practice quite a bit to not do that. My finger doesn't pull the trigger. I pull the hammer back almost all the way, and then I let it go, and that's when the, the round went off. Mm-hmm. The round went off because I, I partially cocked the gun, and the gun uh, uh, um, and the hammer hit the. I mean, that's, the, that's my recollection. I, I almost never pull the trigger until we're ready to shoot and everybody's cleared. I, I keep my hand away from the trigger. But. Um, uh, and I showed her, and as it would be in the shot for the composition, but I, I, I you know, again, the, the many, many times I've done this, I never pull the trigger till we roll the camera. Right. Well, I mean, it makes sense, but I'm just saying, if you're pulling something back, your index finger has to have some sort of leverage. So, where you're not intentionally, like, pulling, it's probably still using some leverage, because you're yeah, doing that, a motion that, with your thumb. That I can't testify to because I don't know. I try, in fact, to do the opposite. I always try to do the opposite of that. I try to never pull the trigger on a gun until we roll the camera, mm-hmm. no, no matter what. As a safety precaution, just be in the habit of always keep the gun pointing down. When they say cut, if we're going to do another angle, keep the gun pointing down. You know, what it, like, right. I, I have a protocol of what I, how I try to handle the gun, but... Um, 
I'm just, uh, again, I'm very, very, uh, I can't believe these people are saying that they think somebody planted the bullet there. That, that's, a, that's a really, 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 uh, 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 that's a really, really powerful thing for them to suggest. Because I'm not saying it's deliberate, that someone deliberately wanted to cause something like this. It takes you completely out of the world of the accidental, which I find hard to believe. I'd like to believe this was an accident, but anyway. Right. Well, I mean, you'd also have to, you know, make sure you plant that round exactly in a specific place. Yeah, you know, and also, you got, or more importantly, you got to tee up that round in the gun itself. Right. How do you know she takes a box of rounds and some of them are blank and some of them are live and, and she's going to put the gun that's going to end up, you know, or, or what, you're hope, what you're hoping is, I wouldn't say hoping, but or what you're guessing is that if I've got, the gun holds how many rounds? Five or six, the Colt? Six. So if it holds six rounds and you load six rounds, you're going to assume that a bunch of blanks are going to go off and then somebody's going to hit the ground with a bullet. Eccles, the other actor in the scene, this is a crime circus presentation. But, but all I know is that, that that's, that's surmising that someone else loaded the gun. Hannah loaded the gun. Hannah loaded the gun. Yeah. Hannah is the only one that could load the gun. Hannah put the live round in the gun. I want to believe it was by mistake, but I mean, I, everybody's fairly certain it couldn't be any other answer. It just couldn't be. Was... Right. But, I mean, and she's already admitted that she loaded the gun that's not you know she has already stated that she loaded it and that she's the only one that does so um you know and that's kind of where it still is going to come down to yeah at this point but i'm yeah like i said i'm just i'm hoping her that they agree to a uh, secondary interview with her but if not i mean boss there and if he wants to talk to me, because to be quite honest with you, I don't know how much longer I can go without sitting down to do an interview with someone and giving us a real statement about this. So this is costing me jobs. I let go for a job yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 Lauren Michaels, the, the creator of Saturday Night Live, and one of my dearest friends, I say to you without hesitation that I was Lauren responsible after they had kind of set aside and put in the closet potential Kennedy Center honor for him, I am the one that figurated that when I called the two men that are the current producers. I, your predecessor were not really very focused on Lore, you know, and, and him. And, and I said, if you're ever going to have a better show for the Kennedy Center than the show with Lauren because of all the, uh, uh, because of all the, uh, comedy talent he's created and, and, and discovered. And they were like flipped it. The next thing you know, they announced that Lauren is getting the Kennedy Center. And it's going to be all those people, you know, Tina Fey and Will Farrell and all the the greats of Lauren's, you know, 50 year. And I was supposed to be one of those people. Now they told me, um, I mean, I am to be responsible for him even getting the award by reinvigorating that idea. And they told me it, it, it was the best of the world. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you're, you know, everyone, as I have seen, everyone has been sitting down and doing interviews with the media. So we can't, we cannot tell you that you can't talk to people. Um, you know, I can advise against it and I can say, you know, be careful what is said because we can use all of that, which, I mean, you've been completely open with me and cooperative with everything. So, you know, I don't suspect I mean, that. I'm not, not going to say anything that I haven't said to myself. I'm going to say to them, where the bullet came from, how, how we ended up where we ended up with a woman is killed. I said, that's something I don't have an answer for. Right. And I've said privately, I've said to them, I've given one or two friends of mine uh, off the record comments. And I've said to them, I have a bunch of faith in the Santa Fe Sheriff's Department 
or anybody else you investigate, they're going to find out what happened. I have abundant faith in that. The only thing I want to counter here is the idea that this set was a date. Yeah. Right, which you are well within your right to do. And, you know, um, with, obviously there's been other peoples that have spoken out against it being an unsafe set. So, you know, by all means, there there's nothing wrong with you expressing anything regarding the set or the safety or anything of the sort like that. Um, again, the only thing I'm going to say, because you're seeing this with with um these other people is the statements that they're releasing are very much contradicting contradicting what they gave us so um i can guarantee you i won't contradict anything i've said to you which <laughs> which what uh the, in turn we can what, use what what, what 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 was i said one of the great as you can well know as you well know one of the great benefits of telling the truth is you never have to keep track of your story. Uh, absolutely, because then it doesn't get construed. If you're right. speaking to to the truth, then there is no room for misinterpretation. Listen, if I thought, if, if someone said to me, you know, in your office, or whatever, I said, get a lawyer, because we really think that's, you're going to get charged with something criminally, then... I get a lawyer and you, you know, I would probably be so distraught and even put it into words. But because I know in my heart I'm not responsible for what happened to her. I'm not. I'm not. I know a thousand percent I'm not responsible for what happened to her. I'm devastated. I, I you know, I, I mean, if I told you the truth, I mean, we're up here in Vermont. We're going to buy a house. We're going to sell both of our homes on Long Island in New York. I'm going to retire. I'm not going to do this for a living anymore. I can't. I can't. I can't. You don't know anything about my business. You don't know anything about my business. You're in law enforcement. Right. You're the, per you're the person who, when they do something wrong, you're the last person they want to see. And when you're the person that's the victim, you're the first they want to see. You, you live a very, very difficult but ultimately a very narrow life of it, it's you know it's you know it's right and wrong a lot of people pull a lot of shit on you and you got to play a lot of uh, you know you got to work a lot of angles but i i i get it i get how hard your job is but in my job it has nothing to do how good you are it is a non-meritorious system the greatest actors in the world you'll never hear their name ever and, and some of the most famous and celebrated actors in the world are the shittiest actors in the whole business. We, and we all know that. We all kind of sit there and we all, you know, Bob so-and-so is really a shitty actor. He's not really lucky. This is a business that requires a lot of luck. And I'm 63 years old with six kids and I can't rely on luck anymore. I can't. I can't. I can't do it to my family. Mm -hmm. I can't be sitting there on that pew. I'll tell you this, because God is my judge. I sat on that pew, and they called lunch. But when I sat on that pew, and I saw how well this was going, I said to myself, you know something? This has made me love again. I think I told you that. Yeah. This has made me love making again. And I didn't love movie making. Movie making was tedious. It was time consuming. I had to travel. All these things I didn't want to do with my kids. I mean, all I care about is my wife and my kids. That's all I care about. And I've been lucky that I've been able to keep one toe in the pool here and make some money and support my family. Sometimes it's gone really well and sometimes, you know, so-so. But now, uh, you know, where, where your name, if your name becomes associated with something, nobody wants to work with you anymore. Nobody. You know, you get brought up, you're, you're, you're Johnny Depp and you're guilty of spousal abuse. That hurts you. He was on the top of the pile. Right. They say that you did this, or you had a car accident, you were drunk, 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 anything that makes you look like the villain. You've done something wrong. Not, not that you were unlucky, meaning you were you fell off a mountain or you know, nothing where it was an accident and blameless. Where you're construed as being to blame for something really, really heinous, that Fs up, that Fs up your whole career. Right. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I've seen it happen to many a cops, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um. 
I just want you to know that next week we're going back to the city probably on Sunday. And we're going to be in the city next week to get a little bit of business done because we are trying to push forward with selling our properties there and getting out of there so I don't, you know, so I don't have to work anymore. I wouldn't have to work anymore if we came up here. Okay. But I'm saying I do have, my, my number comes up in your phone, correct? Yes, it does. All right, so if you, but when I go into this, I am going to talk to somebody. I am going to do an interview with somebody. And I'm not going to mention any of the details of the case. You have my word. I, I, I don't comment. I, I, I tell people who call me, I go, I don't, I, I don't know. <laughs> I know there's a person charged with loading the gun and the one guy that brought me in with the gun. And between the two of them, something seems to have gone wrong, but I don't know. The police know. I don't know. Yeah, more, yeah I mean, you're like I said, everybody else is obviously going to... Um, the media with yeah. their own statements and you know we can't it's not we're not going to say hey don't talk to the media that's not something that's you know in our control or something that we would even ask of anyone you know you, you have your rights and that's right, what it right. comes down to right. so you have a right to speak to who you want to speak to um, you know just like I said I just would air caution on on the statements made. Yes, I will. I will believe it. But no more, no there are a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of people speaking out now about how this set was safe and they didn't have any issues with it and that, you know, this camera crew is not uh, not as bad as what everyone is making it out to be. Or what the yeah. media is making it out to be. Yeah. Um, well, so there's, I, think, I think it's interesting that, and I'm going to testify to this, that Looper, this is Lane Looper guy was on Good Morning America this morning. And, uh, and he said, uh, uh, you know, he was complaining about safety. And I stood right in front of him at the wrap on Wednesday. I stood right there in front of him. And he said, we have some issues on this. And I said, such as that our hotel isn't, isn't right. I got some guys sleeping in a car. He never made one mention, not one, of gun safety, not one, not one. I can't wait to do this interview in which I look into the eyes of some reporter from some national feed, CBS, and the CNN, ABC, and they, what's interesting to me is your company, the company that pays your salary, you know, Sue so-and-so, Joe so-and-so from the, from the network, the company that pays your salary owns another company. We're down the hall, so to speak. They make films and TV shows, and guns are going off all day long. The parent company of ABC, CBS, NBC, and CNN, all four of them, and Fox, all four of them have motion picture television arms where guns are going off all day long. How's the safety protocols going on your shows prior to the day this happened to Helena? Mm -hmm. You know, to say that to say this sets that the reason this happened was that it was preventable because there were things everybody could have seen. That is not true. This happened because somebody put the, a live round into a gun. That's it. Right. That's it. There is no other issue to examine. Who put that bullet in there? And if she and her lawyer want to shoot their mouths off, it does make me very angry, obviously, and say, well, it was sabotage. What are you talking about? You said you locked the guns when you went to lunch. You did this, you did this. And I go, well, which is it? She wants it both ways. She wants it both ways. Right. <laughs> and I listen, and I, and I say, I feel terrible. I feel terrible for this girl. I feel terrible for her. Oh, hold on one second, I'm sorry. Okay. okay. Um, I'm sorry, my kids are crap. Um, I feel terrible for her. But I gotta be honest with you, Paul's not so much. <clears throat> Paul's not so much. Because Hall's is somebody who, I mean, he really should have known. About to, to, ch to check? When he, when he said, well, what I'm hearing from him, you know, that he kind of, sort of checked the gun. I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But, you know, Paul's really, she, 
she's she was a kid. I'm not excusing her, but Holmes was a he's, he's a year younger than I am. Holmes, he's 62, and I remember talking to her about that. And, and Holmes is somebody who, he has no excuse. His job was if he saw if he saw bullets, he opened that cylinder and he saw rounds in there. His job was to empty those rounds out of it. That was his job. That was his job. Right. Both of their job. But anyway, I'm, I I just want you to know I'm going to New York. I think on Sunday. Okay. And I'm going to do something with somebody next week, in which I will not discuss the facts of the case. But I am going to touch on this idea that. Uh, the issues about safety and, uh, and and also they want me to talk about and I'm very anxious to talk about a forward looking policy with all the unions about guns on set. Right. They, yeah. they want me to have a very serious conversation about what do I think is the outcome of this. Yeah, and that's not I mean it's not a bad idea. I have you know, I've had people call me and want you to be their spokesperson for that. So well, let me avoid let, Let's see if I get charged criminally by your boss first, and then we'll find out what kind of spokesperson material I really am. Okay. Yeah, I just I thought it was uh, interesting that I'm getting these calls. Like I'm not your, uh, I you know I I can't be the you're middleman not, for that kind of stuff. You're not my publicist. No, 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 I'm not. But I thought that over these many phone calls you had sent, I would have heard you in your mouth. I'm trying very hard to get you to perform that function uh, uh, unbeknownst to you. Okay. Right. The, yeah, the, the personal assistant for your future bookings. Oh, well, my, uh, my new, my, my Santa Fe office. Yes. I'm opening a Santa Fe office. Now, do you have kids? Oh, you have kids? No, I don't. You don't? It's okay. I don't. I don't. Just, uh, just two dogs. That's enough. Enough. All right. Well, I'll be in touch, okay? Okay. Sounds great. Do my thanks to you, okay? Thank you.